there is one thing that we are clear on. The right to life supersedes every other right. We applaud Prime Minister Andrew Holness's stance, cauterizing murders, shootings, domestic violence, rape and other violent acts committed against our citizens is an absolute necessity. We continue to encourage you to call 311 and tell what you know. After all, silence breeds violence. On today's Jamaica Magazine, we are highlighting two important segments of the population, the deaf and seafarers. Stay with us. Sign with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sign with me. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, September 23. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has called on world leaders to double their contributions to the Green Climate Fund, GCF. The fund is seeking to raise 100 billion US dollars by 2020 to aid developing countries adapt and increase their resilience to climate change. An ambitious and successful replenishment will enable our Green Climate Fund to fulfill its role of channeling adequate and predictable climate finance to where it is most needed. I am confident that our fund will continue to respond to the needs and ambitions of developing countries, but we need to place it in a position to effectively do so. Prime Minister Andrew Holness was addressing Sunday's high-level luncheon held under the theme, an urgent call for countries to partner for climate action. The event was jointly hosted by Prime Minister Holness and his Norwegian counterpart, Erna Solberg. Mr. Holness is on assignment in the U.S. state of New York, where he's representing Jamaica's interests at the United Nations. The Prime Minister will be addressing the United Nations Climate Action Summit, the high-level panel for a sustainable ocean economy, and the United Nations General Assembly, which will take place from September 21 to October 1. Mr. Holness will also be holding bilateral talks with several leaders on the margins of the UN General Assembly. During his absence, National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang is in charge of government. In other news, the Jamaica Constabulary Force will be rolling out its revamped traffic management system next month. The new system will regulate the issuing of tickets, address the accumulation of thousands of unpaid tickets, and restore public order among unruly motorists. While making the disclosure, National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang says a centralized web-based system will coordinate payments, demerit points, court fines, and the issuing of electronic warrants. This is, of course, the value added of the new traffic ticket management system. It allows officers of the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch to access real-time reports that detail information on all warrants that have been issued for an individual and flags the warrants that remain outstanding for that individual at any point in time so in fact you can know who they are, what they are standing for and find them and charge them. Minister Chang was speaking at the handover of 80 motorcycles to the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, PSTEB, on Friday. Meanwhile, Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson says the 80 motorcycles will be deployed in town centers and hotspots across the island to allow for quick response and enforcement of traffic breaches. The increased mobility, Major Anderson says, will greatly impact traffic crashes and road deaths. This is something that we are paying particular attention to. And for the last part of the year, both through our enforcement strategies and our presence, we are hoping to get a reduction. The government of Jamaica and the People's Republic of China have signed a protocol to govern the export of frozen lobster to China. The agreement, which was signed on Thursday, outlines the sanitary and hygienic conditions necessary to facilitate such export. It also indicates the responsibilities of the local authority body, the Veterinary Services Division, in coordination with the General Administration of Customs of the People's Republic of China. 
Fisheries Minister Audley Shaw says the agreement is a big step in the right direction as it further expands the market for the export of frozen lobsters into China. Over 28,000 kilograms of live lobster in export is expected this year. I urge all our relevant stakeholders and our potential exporters to adhere to their responsibilities to comply strictly with the requirements. The new agreement is an expansion on a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, signed in 2017 for the export of fisheries products to China. Since the signing of that MOU, Minister Shaw said a protocol for the export of live lobster was developed and ratified by both countries and there has been steady export of live spiny lobster from Jamaica to China. 120 primary school teachers in 75 schools across seven parishes will be taught how to diagnose and correct various language-based learning disabilities in students. It will be facilitated by the Creative Language-Based Learning Foundation following the contract signing on Wednesday with the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF. The six-month course is being funded by JSIF at a cost of $20.6 million. What we want to do from here on out is just to continue to build from strength to strength. And, and I'm sure that in the time to come, we will see the results of the students who have benefited from this program. So when we have a creative learning-based platform that will assist children with learning disabilities, it is a win not just for the teachers who are being trained, but it is a win for all our children, all our thousands of Jamaican children who will now benefit from teachers who, are, who, have, well, who have now educated themselves and gone through professional development to ensure that they can teach our children who present themselves with learning disabilities. The Linda Mood Bell program was first taught to 50 teachers in Jamaica in 2017. It is a useful technique for children with dyslexia, hyperlexia, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, autism spectrum disorders, and other learning difficulties. And finally, the National Water Commission, NWC, says it will be ensuring that real estate developers build according to the approved water storage capacity as per their permits. Speaking at a JIS think tank, NWC's president, Mark Barnett, says permits usually require housing developments to have water storage for a minimum of six days. However, Mr. Barnett says developers tend to ignore that part of the permit and that the NWC will be applying enforcement measures. For those developers who would have been approved and based on the certificate of approval issued by the NWC, which is also used by the parish council or the municipal council as a means of granting uh, development approval, they are going to be mandated before getting their final connection to the NWC system in terms of those um, requirements. Mr. Barnett says storage is a requirement for continued water supply to customers in the event of a disruption in the NWC system. Meanwhile, Mr. Barnett is also recommending that persons modify their premises to facilitate rainwater harvesting. So where persons would have put in a townhouse complex, an apartment complex, most of the driveway is paved, it is just simple an approach to put a small storage capture that rainwater that is flowing from those surfaces and you could use that for your on-site irrigation of your common areas rather than utilize the potable water. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Water is precious. So we encourage everyone to practice the four R's of water conservation. Always remember to reduce your use of water wherever possible. Replace water wasting devices with water savings devices. Reuse water wherever possible. And wherever leaks are found, please repair them and repair them quickly. Don't delay. Practice the four R's of water conservation today. Jamaica is making significant strides in its quest to become the center of logistics and maritime operations in the region. We intend to do so by fully utilizing our location, our workforce, and our indomitable spirit. The seas call them home. Home. Where the northeast trade winds dance through the sounds of reggae. Where the cockpit country shadows the world's fastest man.
the vanguard of the Caribbean. The seas call them home, home to Jamaica. Jamaica is the third largest island in the Caribbean and the largest English-speaking island state, with the seventh largest natural harbor in the world, essential for a robust shipping industry. Jamaica also has the second largest transshipment hub in the Caribbean. These developments are driven by a commitment to honor the international maritime conventions that Jamaica has signed, establishing a maturing partnership with the International Maritime Organization, IMO. This 40-year partnership brings consistent advocacy for the maritime interests of Jamaica, the Caribbean and small island developing states and the least developed countries. The seas carry them on, shaping an expansive and progressive maritime vision, fueling a structure and infrastructure of container crews and bulk cargo ports, maritime administration and ship registration, maritime education and training. This vision led to the expansion and upgrading of port facilities island-wide to capitalize on additional trade and larger ships accessing services through the newly expanded Panama Canal. The expansion positions Kingston as one of the region's major ports. The Port of Kingston is also equipped to offer a range of maritime logistical services. For example, operating as the regional hub for vehicles delivered to 23 destinations in Central America and the Caribbean. Through German Ship Repair Services Jamaica, the island also offers wet dock repair services and plans full ship repairs with a floating dry dock. Jamaica's commitment to a greener maritime environment guides its fuel diversification with the use of clean fuels including natural gas. The prevention of maritime pollution is also integral in policy initiatives. As part of this thrust, Jamaica is now acceded to the Ballast Water Management Convention 2004 and is also the lead partnering country in the IMO's Global Ballast Partnerships Program. Bunkering is another key element of Jamaica's position as a major shipping centre. We supply bunkers not only for vessels calling at Jamaican ports, including cruise ships, but also for those transiting across the wider Caribbean. Falmouth, Montego Bay, Ocho Rios, Port Antonio and Kingston, five cruise shipping ports, with the Falmouth Pier being purpose-built for the largest cruise ships in the world. These major cruise ports offer a full range of cruise passenger facilities and services. Awarded the world's leading cruise destination, Jamaica's unique attractions, diverse tourism and numerous recreational and cultural activities are equal sources of attraction for the creme de la creme of the seas, Royal Caribbean's Harmony of the Seas, the world's largest cruise ship and other major cruise lines. The seas sends them out. Seafarers and shipping staff trained in Jamaica for international service are key to Jamaica's success as a maritime state. The Caribbean Maritime University, CMU, is the sole IMO-recognized maritime training institution in the English-speaking Caribbean for the training of officers. The CMU is now poised to satisfy the region's demands in the expanding maritime and logistics sectors with the opening of five satellite campuses. Through partnership with the Technical Cooperation Division of the IMO, Jamaica helps countries in the region meet their obligations under the International Convention on Standards of Training, Certification and Watchkeeping for Seafarers. Jamaica has also chaired for 10 years at the IMO the organ responsible for the international rules for standards of training for seafarers. Jamaica is committed to reducing substandard shipping in the Caribbean. To meet this objective, the island has hosted the Secretariat of the Caribbean Memorandum of Understanding on Port State Control, CMOU, since 2004. In addition, Jamaica is host to the International Seabed Authority, 25 states now have permanent missions to support the regulation and control of all mineral-related activities of the authority. Partnering with the IMO Program of Integration for Women in the Maritime Sector, Jamaica has helped mobilize maritime women in the region 
and strengthened their contribution to the safety, security and environmental protection of the maritime industry. Jamaica has also hosted the inaugural Regional Women in Maritime Association WEMAC conference. Its executive is led by a cohort of strong female leaders, including its first president, a Jamaican. The seas carry them through. Jamaica's long-standing advantages, highly developed shipping expertise, and a skilled and educated workforce has seen our maritime sector blossom into an invaluable resource for the Caribbean and the region. A maritime state, a maritime home, bridging the IMO with the Caribbean and the Americas. Let's get together and feel all right. As we celebrate International Day of Sign Languages, we highlight deaf children and their need to communicate with us. Take a look. some things we may say. No. Thank you. Goodbye. Excuse me. Yes. Please. Hello. I'm sorry. Wanna play? What's up? Stop! What's a Wi Fi password? Where's the bathroom? What's your name? Drink Water What's the name of your school? Where's the town? Bus Park Shop. How to get a deaf person's attention. Don't shout at me. Don't throw anything at me. That's dangerous. 
You can walk beside me and touch me on my shoulder lightly. Or you can wave at me. If I'm in a room, you can flicker the lights. Maintain eye contact. Ensure you're looking directly at the person you're speaking with. Try not to let your eyes wander. Also, it's best to communicate in a room that has good lighting. If it's too dark, communication will be difficult. Please, make sure you don't have anything in your hands when you're talking to me. If you cannot sign, you can write, draw, show a picture, or text. Another way you can communicate with me is by using gestures. You can use your body and your hands to speak. For example, if you don't know the sign for bus, you could use this sign. If you don't know the sign for stop, you could use this gesture. Now that you've gotten some quick tips on how to communicate with the deaf, be inspired by deaf teacher and advocate Anthony Aiken. had German measles, rubella, and either I could have had a physical disability, be blind, but I, w I became deaf and I'm happy with it, I'm perfect with it. My mother, she was really concerned, she didn't know where to put me. St. Christopher's School for the Deaf was too far, it was in Brownstone, so my mother held me at home till I was about six years old, and I found Danny Williams School for the Deaf. I was placed there at six and continued from there. The first time I signed, or the first time I witnessed sign language, was six. Before that, it was lip reading and gestures. The children would sign, but the teachers didn't sign. But I was good at lip reading, but the education aspect of it, learning, that wasn't a part of it. We were focusing on being able to speak and being with speech therapists, and that's why, hence, not having the great education I should. I was working at Jamaica Flower Mills, it was a good job, but communication was always a challenge. Sometimes there are a lot of misunderstandings, so I decided to resign. I, re I didn't work for one year, and then I had my son after that year, and then JD called me, Jamaica Association for the Deaf. It wasn't my goal to be a mentor, but it has truly been beneficial because the children need that. They need role models, they need mentors. I encourage the deaf children to have deaf pride, to know that they can. You are on the same level as a hearing person. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that you can't hear. You have a lot of deaf adults who are successful and you can, you can achieve. You can get the education that you want, you can do anything that you want, you can achieve. Don't feel like you can't because you're deaf. Um, the same hearing people who are teasing you and saying you're dumb and all these things. Don't focus on that. Focus on yourself and focus on improving yourself. With the sign language, everyone is included. That's my philosophy. So that means hearing people have to learn how to sign so that they can respect the deaf community. And the deaf person himself, himself or herself, will feel pride. Because when I think back on when I was growing up, how I was forced to lip read and forced to talk, I'm happy to see now that sign language is there and everybody is using it and that's my philosophy.
I say be careful what you teach your little children Make sure I know something to hurt them Mind what you say to my sister She could be the next Prime Minister Sexual abuse is always a very difficult thing to confront, particularly when the alleged victim is a child. Parents, if it is that you suspect that your child has been sexually abused or is in a vulnerable set of circumstances where an abuse may occur, we encourage you to have dialogue with your child. Take the child to the pediatrician who normally attends to the child. If there is no such pediatrician, take your child to the clinic, to the hospital, to some medical practitioner who can do an assessment for you. It's very important as well that we don't just look at the physical side, but we also seek to find kind of the kind of psychosocial support that a child may need. Does the child need a session with a counsellor? Does the child need to speak with a pastor who is used to dealing with these issues? Does the child need to get that ongoing psychological support to assist with the healing process and also to assist the child in becoming strong enough, as it were, to deal with the various processes that will follow once it is that you suspect an abuse has occurred. If it is that the child actually discloses when you engage the child in discussion that yes, mommy and daddy, I was abused. We encourage you to entertain the child, to listen to what the child has to say to you and to take it very seriously. So we really urge you to have those discussions and to seek guidance in terms of do I speak to the police about this, which we always say you have to. Because once a child has been sexually abused, it's a criminal matter and it means that once at all possible, the child should be assisted to go through the processes so that the perpetrator can in fact be held accountable. Support your child and let them understand in very clear terms that they are not the cause or the reason for this abuse having been perpetrated. But the most important element is to support them, get them access to the services that they need and give them a chance to have you give them that listening ear. For these tips and of course any other information that deals with children, that is anyone under 18 years, please feel free to contact the Office of the Children's Advocate. We're at 72 Harbour Street, downtown Kingston and our numbers are 948-1134 or website www.oca.gov.jm. Thank you. Watch what you teach your little children. Make sure I know something to hurt them. I know what you're saying to me, sister, cause she could be the next prime minister. And that's all the time we have here on this station. Catch us round about the same time tomorrow. We are available online at your leisure. There's our website, our pages on all the major social media sites, our YouTube channel and our mobile app that's smartphone compatible. On behalf of the entire team here at the GIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.